Drama of This Media, this is Driving Discussions, a podcast series focusing on the forces that affect road fuels globally. Greetings and salutations once again. I'm Jason Metko, spot ticker reporter here at Argus, and on this episode we're sitting down for the first time with our base oils reporter, John Dietrich. Today we're focusing on the current global surplus overhang, how U.S. refineries are reacting, and what's coming in 2023. John, thank you for coming on the presentation here. Great to have you. I guess just first off, let's talk about where things currently stand in the market. I know there's quite a surplus and you know other places in the world that's not necessarily the case when it comes to individual fuels, but there is a surplus in base oils. Tell us a little bit about that. So we have seen a severe cut to demand in quite a few regions. Uh, there's also been very strong production globally, uh, particularly South Korea. Uh, probably the, the biggest block in the market has been the lack of consumption out of China because of their continued efforts to kind of keep things closed during COVID and, and everything along that. So that's led South Korean material to really flood the market in India. And it's led South Korean and other Asian producers to offer more product into places like Mexico, South America, that are typically places where the U.S. exports a lot of its surplus volumes. So you've got very full tanks in India. You've got very full tanks in Mexico. um, And that's kind of limited where people can place exports into. We're also seeing reduced demand in Europe. Uh, which is another place the U.S. tends to export to, although on a more strategic basis. And as a result, there's just there's just a lot of supply everywhere. We're also seeing growing inventories here in the U.S., both on the actual base oils themselves and then what they're used to make, finished lubricants like motor oils, engine oils for you know cars, farm equipment, industrial applications. And so with this overhang has, be- has become growing concern about the need to draw down inventories. We're seeing a lot of base oil consumers, kind of colloquially referred to as blenders, seeing a lot of blenders and their customers all trying to really draw back inventories, particularly focusing on material that was purchased in like June, July, when the market was at its peak. And so you've got a situation where these guys are drawing down inventories earlier than normal, uh, you've got a situation where demand is not great just because of the economic climate that we're in. And then you've got a situation where the U.S. base oil producers, they don't really have a lot of places or anywhere really to be exporting any of this surplus. So it's, it's putting a lot of downward pressure on base oil prices at the moment. Let me follow up on a 30,000 foot view of things. How is the war in Ukraine affecting the markets in your realm? So... Russia is a big producer and exporter of base oils. A lot of their material goes to Europe, uh, goes to Turkey. That product is now kind of being diverted toward Asia, toward India. With the sanctions, there are concerns that some of this material is being, say, shipped to other countries nearby, blended with material from those countries, and then being shipped as product from that country. And so it's really Russian base oil but it's been, you know, sort of transshipped and um, blended with a bit to try to make it seem like it's not Russian base oil. Uh, so for Europe, that's left them a little tight on supply, although the U.S. has the the ability to kind of make up for that. The bigger problem in Europe has been the lack of demand. And a lot of that ties to the Russia-Ukraine war because of rising energy costs, rising food costs. And so something like getting an oil change becomes the last thing on your list of priorities. He is John Dietrich, our base oils reporter here at Argus. This is Driving Discussions. Let's pivot now, focus on domestic issues here, specifically refiners. I imagine they're having a tough time right now with this supply glut that's out there, John. Yeah, they are. Um, We would expect to see more refiners begin shifting the feedstock for base oil production, which is uh, vacuum gas oil, VGO into uh, catalytic crackers to make diesel distillates. And, I mean, we see as well as I think other people at Argus have seen a pretty strong market for diesel, for heating oil uh, in the U.S. and then in Europe. So we would have expected some of this glut to be drawn down by refiners taking that action to focus more on distillate production. However, while some of them have, 
others have not. And that's kept surplus supplies pretty high in the base oil market. Um, one thing that you can do with actually with actually produced light grade base oils, the low, lower viscosity material that typically goes into like passenger car motor oil, is you can in certain countries blend it in with diesel and kind of make that diesel go further. And the base oil is typically uh, it, economically attractive to do this with. However, the two biggest countries for that are Mexico and India, both of which are just full to bursting with base oil already. So some refiners will undoubtedly and have started cracking back those light-grade base oils, putting them back into fuels production. But it does seem as though there's been a hesitance to really go all out in terms of producing distillates in in the U.S. for whatever reason. And I'm sure our diesel editors would know more about that than I do. Uh, so domestically, that's a challenge. And then consumption is really the other big challenge we're seeing. Um a lot of blenders, again, they're facing customers who are really trying to draw back inventories. There was also uh, a price movement in terms of what we call based all posted prices were closest to contract prices as they were. They came down pretty significantly in September, and that should have meant a pretty good pass through on finished lubricants. However, uh, blenders require mostly based all to make their finished lubricants. They also require specialty specialty chemicals called additives. And those additives have been extremely tight all year long because the additive producers have very sophisticated, very diverse supply chains. And so it's only taken a hiccup here or there, and suddenly your additive supply is is very reduced. Um, As a result, that limits how much base oil a blender needs because if they don't have the additive to blend it with, they can't make a finished lubricant. So we've seen persistent tightness on the additives, and that's also raised the cost. So for a lot of blenders, that reduction in base oil contract prices didn't really generate much margin because their additive costs ate up almost all of that. So they're in a situation where their customers want almost the full amount of the base oil decrease because historically that's how things go. Um, but you know where maybe they were getting 50 cents off the base oil, they had a 40 cent increase to additives, so you're left with a gain of like 10 cents in margin. Their customers want the full 50 cents on the finished lubricant. Okay. So a lot of blenders are dealing with kind of economic challenges and kind of trying to manage that as well. A couple more minutes here with our base oils reporter, John Dietrich, here on Driving Discussions. All right, put on your Nostradamus cap or whatever we're using for future prognostications here, John. What do you see towards the end of the year? Because we're practically there now and into 2023. So at the end of the year, we're seeing just a lot of people pulling down inventories, really soft demand. Um, there is a bit of a challenge for a lot of these blenders. One of the, the biggest base oil producers will be taking a turnaround at their facility in January, uh, mid to late month. And that turnaround has been delayed by about a year, year and a half. So when you open that, that base oil unit and you go in there, Given how long this has been delayed, nobody knows what's going to happen. You know, the company is obviously building a lot of inventory. They're you're trying to be very cautious about having enough product. Um, but, I mean, worst case scenario, they could be down for a very extended amount of time. Uh, similar, another big producer doing the same thing, but theirs is in the second quarter, early second quarter, I think. You could see a very tight market on base oils out of the U.S., or it could just kind of rebalance itself depending on how people manage your in, their their inventories. The other big factor we're going to be looking at is demand from Europe. Um, if we continue to see the Russia-Ukraine war, that continues to lead to global inflation, major energy cost issues over there, uh, and we don't see that market rebound, the U.S. will continue to be long on product and will have issues exporting it elsewhere. If we see an uptick in European demand, and again, the Russian base oil is not coming in, then that's another way for the U.S. to kind of clear some of these surpluses. But the biggest thing is going to be how do these two key refinery turnarounds go uh, in the first half of next year? John Dietrich, our base oils reporter, his first appearance on Driving Discussions. Thanks, John. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. And many thanks to John for coming on the presentation. We look forward to future appearances to chat about all things base oils with John. And with that, another edition of Driving Discussions is in the books. 
a production of Argus Media. A reminder to check out the previous episodes in this series, and for more information on Argus's global refined products coverage, visit argusmedia.com forward slash oil dash products.